Welcome back to the shop. Today we're working on my buddy's 2004? Yeah, 2004. 2004 Chevrolet. He is going to give us a workaround for the condenser replacement. Evaporator. Evaporator. Dash, evaporator. Yeah. Sorry, the dash. I always get those confused. Yeah. So we're going to get in there and you're going to hear Dave give you a sort of a play-by-play. -play. Alright, this is David behind the camera here. Like Joe said, we'll try to keep this quick. Um, big overview here is uh, there are videos on YouTube to do this. Uh, what I did is I, I watched them all probably 10 times and I think uh, I got the definitive guide here to kind of doing this what we feel is going to be the best way. Um, so the backstory is obviously to do the evaporator which is buried all behind there um, you got to take the entire dashboard out. I mean it's just a nightmare for anybody that's done that. Um, it's not fun. Uh, if you've never done it you're not missing anything. So the evap the hack mod here is we get the glove box out of the way we got some of the trim plastic out of the way uh, and then we're gonna cut a cut a hole in the plastic box and uh, it's gonna give birth to the evaporator so let's get going all right so there it is um, we have to get the evaporator sits in here uh, horizontally and it kind of slides in like a a cartridge um, at least that's how we're gonna get it out of there so did have to drill out two little rivets right here and uh, there's a couple seven millimeter bolts to hold the glove box on so the next step in this mod is this is in the way as well um, that's gonna turn into a factory uh, that's just an optional piece now it's getting cut out All right, there we go. Um, I'm convinced probably these uh, one of these oscillating tools. That's probably the best way. That's the best way to do this. It's a pretty precise cut, um, and obviously you'd you'd have a tough time with a cutoff wheel because the diameter of the uh, of the wheel you'd have a hard time getting past the center line of the radius to get up there. You'd start running into other dash parts. Which honestly, you know what? I mean, as long as you're not cutting any wires, who cares? Um, that's the same thing here. You can see where I, I cut out this center section. I didn't have to go all the way out to this edge, um, but I actually did that on purpose because this is where it starts tying back into the bracket, and I didn't want to have something here, you know, flapping in the breeze because this is such a, uh, you know, this truck is perfectly silent considering it's almost 20 years old, so I wanted to keep the interior uh, noise level down. So that's it there. You can see how far I got up there as high as I could. Um, oh, it looks like I nicked the old evaporator. Good thing it's already junk. Um, and I took it out as wide as I could there. All right, we decided to, uh, it'd probably be a good idea to try to put some of the foam um, back on. Like this is the looking at the front side that'll be against the firewall. Um, probably a good idea to have that on there to keep this thing from bouncing around. All right, so I pulled out as much as the uh, foam as I could. Uh, it's time to uh, it's time to go up front, and we'll disconnect uh, that little manifold block where it's all tied together at the firewall, and slide this bad boy out. And how do you know the evaporator was bad? Have you just replaced it? Um, honestly, it's a it's a wild guess, but it's a pretty educated guess because I had just recharged the system. Um, now after that it's it's failed I'm pretty sure that's that was the source of the leak um, but I just did a fresh charge on the AC system life was good I was nice and chilly and then I was like what's that weird smell and then all of a sudden I had no you know no no cold air and so I, I, I was probably huffing Freon in the cab and didn't know it so <laughs> nothing wrong with me <laughs> Actually, in hindsight now too, um, I could recommend I would even I would even trim down a little bit lower. I'd even go a quarter inch lower. Why not? It'd be easier. So yeah, you got to fight this thing just a little bit. Actually, you know what I might do? I could snip that right there. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. I'll snip that. 
All right, so I just I just snipped this back about another probably three quarters of an inch. Um, mostly, I'm I'm not worried about obviously damaging this. I could just rip it out. Um, but the biggest concern is I don't want to damage the new one putting it in. So oh yeah, whoops. <laughs> well, looks like we're definitely gluing that back in. This is one of those UV lights, and you can see, hopefully you can see, it picks up the color there, the lime green, neon green. So, Dave was correct in this. Educated guess, it did blow out here at the evaporator. Alright, so here's the, uh, I was talking about the studs, and the off chance yours does not come with new studs. Um, what is it, I think is it a 4 or a 5? So yeah, it looks like a 5, a five millimeter does fit right on there you could always use that to get those out of there and then in the off chance you strip that out or something doesn't work right you could always get really super close to the base um, you could get close to the base with a pair of vice grips because that uh, the other half of the blocks that bolt on here are so thick you know your 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 nuts only clamping on the on the top half there That's why I'm over here doing this with Joe because uh, he knows all sorts of cool little tricks. So that little piece I broke off on the bottom that snapped off because of the wonderful plastic quality. Um, and to be fair, it is almost 20 years old. But uh, Joe had a great idea. We uh, got it to stick together with super glue and then um, sprinkled some baking soda. Some baking soda. I've never heard of that trick. And uh, baking soda in there and it, um, almost acts like uh, you can almost like a little thickener and an activator for the super glue. So that's pretty good. Um, of course, we'll still glue it from the outside once it's back together. But so I did the best I could getting that foam back in there. Um, we we tuck some in there, and uh, so hopefully it, it won't vibrate around, and uh, should be good to go. We're gonna get this thing back together. All right. So I left those little uh, those caps in there. Uh, until we got it slid in, just so we didn't knock any dirt down in there. Um, and this one is a Murray brand evaporator. Um, a friend of mine that has a repair shop said they're, you know, for a for a lower cost unit, they're pretty good quality. And those caps are on there actually too. Uh, it sounds like a beer when you crack those caps because uh, Murray ships it pressurized, so that way when you pull the caps off, you know it's holding pressure. Um, but yeah, we knocked the caps off, and um, and my buddy Tim he put an ounce of uh, of compressor oil in there for me. Um, just to make sure we had enough oil in the system. All right, let's get those caps off there. We're going to get this thing reattached, make sure we got the right O-rings in there, and uh, we're actually going to gonna put it in a vacuum and charge it before we actually glue the front cover back on. Nothing yet. All right, so we got the new seals. Um, we did use a, a, a nice wipe to make sure the surfaces were clean. No point on uh, coming this far and screwing it up now. He just used an alcohol wipe for cleaning your glasses. All right, we're back. It held vacuum. So uh, Joe's getting everything disconnected. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start, uh, start throwing some gas into this thing. All right, so uh, we got this thing back in here. Um, stuck it down, uh, suck, sucked it into a vacuum for a little while. Um, we got it. Recharge full of gas. Joe has uh, Joe has some gauges we used. Um, it appears to be working, so that's good. Um, now it's time to, to glue it all back together. So uh, just a, a quick post mortem little recap on what we did. Um, it actually was was not a very intense project. Um, we used I think a seven millimeter socket, a five point five millimeter socket, a thirteen millimeter socket, the oscillating tool to, to cut open the window here. Um, and then whatever your your weapon of choice is to, to hack through this uh, dash brace You know if 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 you were trying to do this in a hurry You know, this is probably a 30 to 45 minute job. It was not bad at all. So don't be scared to, to tackle it um, We got this bottom piece glued back in um, Let's see what else. I mean that was it. I mean it was pretty straightforward. It wasn't bad at all 
Um, I said, don't be scared. Don't be scared to hack on. Hack on that window too. Cut that thing open. Give yourself plenty of room to work. Um, Joe had some of the uh, plastic bonder sitting around, so we're going to use that to glue it back together. Um, but that's it. We got AC. First thing on the instructions for doing the AC, the last thing we're using. What's that? Nitro gloves. 